Hey guys, welcome back. This video is going to be an update on the all-in-one desktop hobby machine that I started working on. For those of you who are just tuning in, I recently started working on a DIY desktop hobby machine that I hope will be able to turn into, with the help of 3D printing, any machine a hobbyist might need or want. So instead of buying a dedicated machine for a specific use you might have, instead you'll just 3D print a few parts that will allow this base machine to turn into any machine you need. So far it can function as a lathe, a lapidary machine, a parts or rock tumbler, a split lap, a drum sander, bench grinder, flex shaft or micromotor, drill press, bench polisher, a tool sharpener, a table saw. The list of possibilities is really endless, and I hope to create many more conversions as time goes on. I'll post a link to the original video and concept in the description if you're interested, but the purpose of this video is to serve as an update for those who have been kind enough to support the project. In my last video, I offered for a minimum donation of $10 to share the 3D files, parts list, and build tutorial for those interested in building their own everything machine, I call it the gumball. And the response has been amazing. You guys are awesome. I only asked for a $10 donation, and I have to say the majority of you guys actually gave a lot more than I asked for. So I just want to express my sincere gratitude and let you guys know that because of you, this project will continue. Inflation is really taking a big chunk out of many people's hobby budgets, so hopefully this machine can really help a lot of people in the future. So thank you so much. This week was really hard for me. I moved to a new apartment, and moving in New York City is an absolute nightmare. I spent the better part of the past 10 days packing and unpacking, disassembling and reassembling, and most of it without a computer, and it has not been fun. But despite how busy I was, I did make some progress with the machine, so I wanted to show you guys where we're at. I finally finished the wet saw attachment, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. I'm working on setting up a website where backers can directly access any of the attachments or mod files, but in the meantime, any backers wanting to print this mod now, just shoot me an email. So it attaches to the main machine here, using an M4 screw into the threaded inserts on the front of the machine. I'm going to test it using this 4 inch diamond tile saw blade, because that's really all I had. But I knew going into this that this type of blade is definitely not ideal. I feel this type of blade is just too thick. Next, you're going to fill up the reservoir with water, about halfway. Put the top back on, and then you slide the machine into position, making sure the blade is centered. That's very important. Next, we're going to attach the splash guard. You're going to want to use a screw to fix it into place, but for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to fix it into position with a sewing needle. And now you can see the splash guard is fully positionable and adjustable. Okay, so let's test it. I'm going to pick out a few rocks to test, but like I said, this is not really the correct blade to use with this machine. As you can see, it definitely works, but for such a lightweight machine, uh, the thickness of this type of blade is just not ideal. So I went on to Amazon to try and find something better, and I decided to test these. These are 100 millimeter with a half inch arbor and a thickness of about a quarter of a millimeter. So these are much thinner blades and at about two bucks a blade, you definitely can't beat the price. And as you can see, these work perfectly. They cut like a dream. They produce a really clean edge and are great for precision cutting. Then I tested a bunch of different materials of various hardness. I think what I'm cutting here is fluorite and it cut everything I threw at it with no problem. So then I wanted to see how it would do with metal, and it buzzed right through this sheet steel, which really surprised me. So I thought I would try and push these blades to their absolute limit. So what I have here is some high speed tool steel or tungsten carbide, something that has never been an option for me to cut. And while it didn't cut as quickly as the rocks did, I was shocked to see that it easily got through it. So at this point I figured I had completely destroyed the blade. So I pulled out another rock to test, and it cut through it like the blade was brand new. So needless to say, for two bucks, these blades are definitely worth it. So when I'm designing these mods and attachments, I try and come up with as many uses as possible. So if you take the water tank and you turn it upside down and you stand the machine upright, you can screw the tank into the threaded inserts on top of the machine and configure the water tank like this. 
And with this attachment and setup, you can run these split lap discs that I've also officially finished. So these are available now for download as well. And you can run the machine as a split lap polisher with a water tank. So you can fill the water tank with whatever you're working on and grind or polish using these see-through discs. You can also connect the tank to the front of the machine while it's laying down. So you can run whatever tools you want, like this round diamond tool, and have water available. Another thing that I noticed about this water tank is that when it's attached to the base, it increases the machine's stability, and it allows you to run much larger tools. Here I'm working on a cabbing machine attachment. The files aren't ready to be released yet. It's still a work in progress, but I can already tell that it's going to work. When you're done working, storage is really easy. You just remove the splash guard and you store it inside the water tank. When not in use, the entire setup doubles as a tool holder. You can store your diamond blades in the middle channel and all the water drainage holes were intentionally sized so they can accept standard 2.35 millimeter micromotor or flex shaft tool bits. So when not in use, the entire unit doubles as a tool holder, so you can easily store all of your various tools and bits, helping you stay organized and further saving desk space. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. I just wanted to get something new out for those who've been supporting the project. Again, thank you so much. I'm going to try and shoot for getting a new modification out at least once a week. If you like this sort of content, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you're interested in making your own gumball, I'm asking for a minimum donation of 10 bucks. That gets you all the required 3D files, a parts and suppliers list, build tutorial, and you'll have access to all available future upgrades as they get made. I think of new mods almost every day, so I'm really excited to see how far we can take this thing. And if you have an idea for a specific mod, I'd love to hear about it. I've attached a link in the description to the original video where I go into more detail about its current uses and how I envision it improving over time. Alright guys, I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.